Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Montclair News Lab. I'm Stefano Kadishi. Here's what's coming up this week. First, safety on campus. We look at recent events that have Montclair students concerned. I don't think that that one incident is an indicator that the campus is unsafe. Next, we hear from former RAs about their emergency training. Obviously, this is not as common as, you know, underage drinking. Active shooters or bomb threats, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And later, going to school with your mom? I introduce you to a mother-son duo right here at Montclair. It's bound to be some type of conflict, especially when you're with that person every day. College is a place for learning and fun. The last thing on anyone's mind should be their safety. But some recent events have shaken students. Aaron Lawler has the story. Our campus is known for being safe for its students, staff, and faculty. Generally, I do feel safe on campus. I feel like we are pretty safe um, knowing that we do have um, on-campus police. But recent events have shaken that image for some. On November 11th, Montclair State University alerted students to an attempted robbery at Bone Hall. Two students, Lux Ildani and Admin Abel Jabbar, were later arrested and charged with burglary, conspiracy, simple assault, and trespassing. Students had mixed reactions after receiving this text. I wasn't really sure like what was going on, and I just get a text on my phone, and like it really creeped me out. Honestly, it was expected. <laughs> I mean, like, we always joke about Bone being, like, the slums. And so, like, I feel like it's par for the course. I was concerned for my friend because she dorms here, and I just didn't think it would, like, happen here. When asked what happened during a student media press conference, President Jonathan Capel reassured the campus community. We were obviously concerned about the incident that happened uh, and are investigating that to understand exactly what that is. But I don't think that that one incident is an indicator that the campus is unsafe. While this event was widely reported, some go under the radar. Just a few days before the break-in, junior Chloe Nafee had her car stolen from Transit Parking Garage. I went to the second floor of Transit where I thought in my head that I parked my car, um, and it wasn't there. While Nafee had reported the crime to the NJ Transit Police, she was frustrated there was no follow-up from University Police. The school had no attempt to like contact me about getting a new parking pass or like reaching out and like saying sorry. After filling out the police report, Nafee asked transit police if there were security cameras. They said there's no cameras inside the parking garage. They only have two cameras, one at each like entrance and exit. Um, and they're really, really bad quality. Vice President for Student Development and Campus Life, Don Souffleris, is aware of the issues with cameras and parking decks cameras that are maintained by the university. I do know that there were some that were not operating, and I know that UPD spoke with facilities. As we recorded this show, we were told the Bone Hall robbery investigation is ongoing and UPD is not available for an interview. Two suspects are still at large. As for the stolen car, it was found two weeks later abandoned in Montclair. No suspects have been identified in the case. A safe campus, but that doesn't mean we should fully let our guard down. For Montclair News Lab, I'm Aaron Lawler. When it comes to campus safety, RAs in dorms like this are the first line of defense. But how well prepared are they for that role? Crystal Durham has the story. What is Montclair's emergency action plan? Amaya Romero was a former resident assistant. She says she was trained on dealing with certain situations like underage drinking, but did not receive specific training on dealing with public emergencies from university police. We weren't given directions, and when we would call UPD, they would be like, oh, it's getting handled, or no, that's a rumor. But again, like, how sure were you exactly? Like, I wasn't sure how sure. I wasn't trusting anything, really. Romero was an RA last year when a report of a suspicious individual carrying a large case caused panic across the campus. This caused a lot of misinformation to surface, leaving employees and RAs like Romero to not know what was a rumor and what was real. I just rather than be safe and I put them on lockdown. So did a lot of my other RA friends. But then we got in trouble after for doing that because we caused hysteria. Romero mentions that unexpected moments like these 
were not a part of her training process. Nobody told us anything. Nobody gave us. No, we didn't train. This is like this is the unexpected things that I said. Like you don't get trained for because you learn as you go. And I guess obviously this is not as common as you know underage drinking, active shooters or bomb threats. I don't know what I don't know what I'm supposed to do as a university as a resident assistant. Either way, like I didn't know what to do. The alleged shooter event turned out to be a false alarm. Former resident assistant Amani Montford Bernard was brought in mid-year to the job. She says she didn't receive any formal emergency action plan training. I was brought in later than the other half-year RAs. So when they had full training, I honestly did not. I kind of just figured my way around. Acting Chief of Police Karen Barrett understands the need for better communication during a crisis. They are now working on that new plan. Make sure it's very clear, it's very direct for those resident assistants to, to, to act, but also that they have an understanding of what they can do before we get there. So it's going to be hands-on. It's going to be things like, here is the plan. Barrett plans to strengthen the relationship between residents' life and university police. So it's easy for me to say, well, there's a plan, go look at it. That doesn't help anybody. That we, that we actually practice the plan and people understand the plan. It seems that we need to really focus in on some of this, and that's why I've already prepared for the spring. And when we're coming back into uh, training for the RAs, we're gonna be a part of it. In the age of instant communication, a well thought out plan is more important than ever before. For Montclair News Lab, I'm Crystal Durant. This semester, students competed in the Mario M. Casabona Future Scientist Program a competition for students majoring in STEM to showcase their work and for a chance to win money. We spoke with a former contestant about what the competition means to him. So for me, the Casabona competition is really just a reflection of everything that's going on in the university within our College of Science and Mathematics. It's a really great opportunity to bring everybody together in a nice professional environment, which is never, you know, punishing or strict, but just very inviting and in making sure that everybody has access to the sciences. I was personally given the opportunity to present here, and I absolutely loved sharing what we were doing and finding out what was going on in the school surrounding me, and of course sharing that with future students that are coming to campus. Earth and environmental science major Emily Seepin won first place for her research on implications for future carbon capture. For most students, going to school with their mom is unimaginable. But for Tia Singleton and Adam Akoff, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Tia and Adam are mother and son, and are both currently film and television students at Montclair. Tia attended several colleges before becoming a mom, and eventually got a job in sales. Adam was attending Stockton University. Tia's mother, Adam's grandmother, got sick, and everything changed. Tia went back to school. When everything happened um, and my mother also got sick during the same time, I just realized that I just wanted to be happy. So that's what ultimately made me want to go into uh, studying film and television. Adam decided he wanted to change his major and be close to his grandmother. So he joined his mom right here at the School of Communication and Media. I was majoring in chemical engineering, but I just, I just realized that wasn't my passion. So then, you know, COVID hits, um, news about my grandmother. So then that's what really made me um, switch, switch schools from Stockton to Essex County. They both started studying at Essex County College and eventually made their way to Montclair, where they are both sophomores. It's an unusual situation. I know he is a bit more reserved, so sometimes I'll do things just to kind of push him, but I really don't. I try not to, at least. I don't think, like, parent so much um, with him on campus. She tries <laughs> not to. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a little parenting going on, but it's, it's nothing too major. Everybody needs a little parenting from your mom once in a while. Besides being classmates, Tia and Adam are also business partners. They have a brand called That's Family, where they make creative content like No Excuses, a podcast centered on sports. I mean, these boys are balling. It's basically like a, a debate talk show, you know, type podcast. We mostly cover football and basketball. Yeah. He calls me delusional when you're the delusional Knicks fan, which I find yeah. very harsh. Yeah, and now I'm your delusional Packers fan. Although Tia and Adam have their fun, being with each other for a majority of the day doesn't come without its hiccups. It's bound to be some type of conflict 
especially when you're with that person every day. Make it act any day. We all we know it's like it's our love. We all here for the same goal. You just have to kind of decompress and just kind of take some time. Sometimes he'll go, you know, and spend some time with his friends. Sometimes I'll do my ladies, my mimo I love my um, mimosa time. Tia and Adam have learned more about each other since becoming classmates at Montclair. I've learned you're, he's a lot more, like I said, outgoing uh, and funny, I would say, than I like realized before. I would say um, just um, how hard of a worker you are, you know, and how much sacrifices you've made. Tia and Adam's life is truly a family affair. Thanks for watching this episode of Montclair News Lab. Until next time, I'm Stefano Kadishi. Mm -hmm.